Hi and thanks for joining me for this video. Now as you know the Raspberry Pi Pico was released a few years ago and now recently we've had the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. Now the original Raspberry Pi Pico with the RP2040 chip inside of it had two Cortex-M0 Plus CPU cores and the Pico 2 has upgraded those cores to the Cortex-M33 but it also includes two RISC-V cores they are the Hazard 3 cores and you can use either two uh, ARM Cortex-M33 cores or two RISC-V Hazard 3 cores in the Pico 2. Now the question is, is it possible to build a single binary that will run on the Cortex-M0 Plus and the Cortex-M33 and the RISC-V Hazard 3? So you can build one binary that you know will support all the boards and in fact both CPU architectures in the Pico 2. And that's what we're going to be looking at today, the RP2350 FAT or Universal Binaries, one binary to rule them all. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, this is going to be very much a hands-on practical video. But the uh, slides have been uploaded to my GitHub repository along with a text file. So if any of the commands that I mention, you need to be able to cut and paste them into your own environment, you'll be able to do that either from the PDF. It doesn't work from the PDF. There's a text file with them in as well. So the way a universal binary works is you build separate binaries for each platform and then you take them and you link them together in one special binary and this universal binary will run on a Pico or a Pico 2. So step one is to get the compiler and the SDK for the RP2040 and the RP2350. That means you're going to need a compiler for the ARM cores, the M0 Plus and the M33, and you're going to need a separate compiler chain for the RISC-V cores. Now you can manually download the SDK and manually download those compilers or you can let the Pico dev extension in VS Code do it for you and I've talked about that in a previous video. Now if you want to do it yourself there's a very very good document from Raspberry Pi called Getting Started with the Raspberry Pi Pico series and there is a section Appendix C Manual Toolchain Setup and that gives you all the information you need to, be able to download both compiler chains and the SDK. However, if you don't fancy doing that, and I personally don't really like doing that, so I use the Raspberry Pi uh, extension inside of VS Code. And if you go ahead and create a new project, as I highlight over here, for the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico or the Raspberry Pi Pico 2 using the ARM core, it will go ahead and it will automatically download the compiler and it will download the SDK. And then if you create another new project, you use and you say you want to use the Hazard 3 cores, it will say, oh, you haven't got that compiler, and it will go and download that for you. So then you have all the compilers and the SDK automatically downloaded for you. Now, if you look inside of .pico SDK, that's the same on Linux and it is on Windows, that's where you can see the SDK and you should see files like uh, CMake external, uh, source tools and so on. And that is the SDK. And also if you look in .pico, Pico SDK slash toolchain, you'll see the two different toolchains in there. 13.2 rel1 is the ARM compiler, RISC V RPI is the RISC V compiler, and you'll need to use those depending on which platform you are targeting. Now, once you have the compilers, you need to go ahead and manually create yourself a project. And the way you do that, create a directory, universal, I've called it, because we're making a universal binary. You go into that, and then I'm assuming you've got VS Code installed. You can use a different editor if you want to. We're going to edit this main.c file. Now, here is the main.c file. It really is quite simple, although it may look a bit different to what you're expecting to see. First of all, we initialize the SDIO. Now these hash if uh, statements are run by the preprocessor in the C compiler, and it knows whether it's compiling for the RP2350 or for the RP2040. And if it is, it goes through and says, well, if I'm on the 2350, which compiler am I using? If it's RISC-V, then print out, basically I'm running on RISC-V. If it's for ARM, print out, I'm running on ARM. If it's the RP2040 print out, I'm running on the RP2040. And then if it is the 2350, basically every 10 goes, it calls this special SDK option called ROM reboot, which will reboot it, the uh, board and you can specify to which architecture. So if you're running in the ARM architecture, you can reboot to RISC-V. If you're running in RISC-V, you can reboot to ARM. So basically the way this will run is it will 
will keep going around a loop, printing out what it is. If it's on the RP2040, it will just keep saying I'm on the RP2040. If it's on the 2350, it will reboot every 10 steps from one architecture to the other. And that way we can show that we can run all three of these different uh, builds, depending on which board you've plugged it into. Now, once you've done that, you then want to edit the cmakelist.txt file. That's the input that you give into CMake. By the way, if you are interested, uh, let me know and I'll make a kind of a beginner's guide to CMake because we do use it a lot here in the Raspberry Pi Pico and not everybody's familiar with it. So if you think that would be a good idea, let me know in the comments below. And this is the CMake file. It's a pretty standard CMake file that they show you in all the Raspberry Pi documentation. The only extra bit is this line seven and eight. You need to include this line here because that way you can uh, get the right things available to the linker. So this can be linked for all three boards. If you don't do that, you're going to get a problem later on in the build stage. But you just basically add in that line as it's shown here. Okay, once you've done that, you need to copy the Pico SDK import file uh, from the SDK. That's the standard file they get you to copy from the SDK into your own project. And that contains everything else that you'll need for building the project. And so now if you look inside of your uh, directory, you'll see the CMake list text file, main.c, and that CMake file that we just copied from the SDK. So three files in total. Now what you need to do is you need to make three directories, one where you build each version of the binary. So I've got build pico, build pico2, a for arm, build pico2, r for risk five, three boards in total, and that's where each one will get built. And what you do is you go into each directory. So here we go, CD build Pico 2A. So I'm starting with the, the Pico 2 arm. You then need to export these uh, different variables that define what you're building. So I'm building for the Pico 2. This is my link here to the SDK. This is the platform, so it's the RP2350 arm. What compiler am I using? The Pico Arm GCC. Where is the compiler? Well, I'm pointing to it here inside of the .pico SDK directory, which VS Code downloaded. If you did it yourself, make that directory where you decided to download your tool chains. Then you run cmake dot dot and then make, and that will go ahead and build the files for the Pico 2. And in fact, if you then do a file of main.elf, you can see here that it has created an ARM one, and there's also main.uf2, which gets built at the same time. Now, basically we need to rinse and repeat. So we're gonna do the same thing now for the Pico 1. So you go up a directory and then into the Pico build directory. You need the same uh, variables there, two that need to change here. Now you're building for the Pico, not the Pico 2, and you're building for the RP2040. Everything else stays the same. C make again and then make, and that will go ahead and build it. And if you look here at the UF2, it's the Raspberry Pi RP2040 that has been built. So now you've got both ARM images, one for the Pico and one for the Pico 2. And finally, we want to build the RISC version for the Pico 2 board. So we go up a directory, now down into the Pico 2R directory. We need to change a few more things here. We're building in for the Pico 2. RP2350 RISC 5, different compiler, the Pico RISC 5 GCC, and now point it to the different directory. Again, this one is inside of where the uh, VS code downloaded it. You can point it to your own tool chain, showing it where the compiler is. Again, do CMake and make, and that will go ahead and build it. And here you can see it's building for RISC 5. So now you've got three builds, one in each of those directories, one for the Pico, and two for the Pico 2, one for each architecture. And now what you need to do is you need to go back up into your uh, main directory there and you need to run the Pico tool and you'll find a copy of the Pico tool in the Pico SDK directory. And so you need to run this link command. And what you're gonna to link together is the output is gonna be called main.bin. And what you're linking together is main.bin from the Pico, main.bin from the uh, Pico 2 arm, main.bin from the Pico 2 arm risk. And you need to use this flag here to separate uh, the different, uh, the padding for the different builds as they're kind of uh, linked together, crashed together, I was gonna say, uh, as one uh, binary. And then what you need to do is you need to create the UF2 file for that. So again, using the Pico tool, you run the command UF2 convert, what we're converting, main.bin, which is that file that we've just created. And you want to create now the RP2040 dot uf2 and you want to specify that it's for the 2040 you then want to do the same thing again for the 2350 
and so that you specify the right parameters to that. And then finally, what you do is now you've got those two UFT files, you concatenate them. That means you basically add them together. So you take this one and you take this one and you put it into main UF2. So we've gone from that main.bin, we've created UF2 files for it, and then we've added the UF2 files together to give us main.uf2. And this file can be loaded onto any board. You put you press the boot select button, you reboot it, and then you just drag it onto the drive that appears there. Uh, as a USB drive and it will work no matter what board you cut and uh, copy it over to. And here is an example of it running. I'm running on the 2350 ARM. It does that 10 times, rebooting to the other architecture. It then does that 10 times, then it reboots and this will just keep going around. So you can see here that same binary runs on both. And you could boot that up onto a Pico 1 board and it would just say I'm running on a, on a Pico on the 2040. Okay, so now I got all that information from this example from the Raspberry Pi Pico examples, that's universal, uh, and they've got that all in there. Now their make files, their CMake files are fairly sophisticated and they do some very clever things to automate all that process, but I think it's important to understand how it's done uh, so that you can then build your own projects to do that. Do have a take a look at the CMake file that they give you there, see if you want to replicate that in your own builds, but it's good having that knowledge of actually what it's trying to achieve. So in summary, the universal binaries work because of the new bootloader in the RP2350. On the RP2040, the boot run will just execute the first thing at the beginning of Flash. So that's how they did it back in the day, and that's what it does now. So that's why you put the RP2040 Flash uh, part first, and it just boots up into that address zero, let's say. Now on the RP2350, the boot ROM is a bit more sophisticated, and it will search through the flash memory until it finds the right image, which has a flag on it, to say, is this the ARM image or the RISC-V image? And that's why we can switch between the two, and that's why it will ignore the 2040 flash image, and then it will go and look for the right one for its architecture. So it's all to do with the uh, bootloader on the new board that allows it to be able to do these clever things. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to my channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>